Well, I'm in charge for the week. <laughs> We're pausing on decking while Steve and Robin are climbing huge rocks in Baxter State Park in Maine. Our summer help has changed. Adam went off to college. We wish him well and thank him for his great work this summer. Meanwhile, Aiden is still here until he starts school in a few weeks. And we are cutting up cedar to make the cockpit and housetop. Similar to how the house sides are, glued and stripped cedar, and then we'll fiberglass over that. This method's easier than shop lines. Yeah. Because the boards are not straight at all. Just so curved, yeah. Yeah. Aiden did his best to get the most out of the cedar, rough cutting the pieces before handing them over to KP, who got the final straight pieces using the table saw. And like it was with the house sides, little imperfections here are okay to include. Knots are fine, because all of it will be covered in epoxy and then fairing compound and sanding before it's fully encapsulated in fiberglass and painted. That's where we're headed. Big old patch of rock. <laughs> I thought those ducks were a dog for a second. And like, oh, I was really excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it looks amazing. I can't wait to go up there. You might remember that Robin and I came up here last year and we climbed on the left side of the Tabor Wall in North Basin and we didn't really know what route we were on and we just like swung leads and yeah. quested up and it was a beautiful rock, beautiful wall, beautiful location. If you think I should be going a different way, let me know. And the whole right side of that wall is just huge and steep and there doesn't seem to be much on there. It's a handful of climbs, but it looks like the people who were doing the route development back in the 80s were, um, they didn't really have the technology in terms of climbing protection to connect the dots between some of the crack systems. And there's a lot of really cool looking features out there that yeah. maybe, just maybe. It's linking them up. Maybe we can figure it out. This is awesome. Well, hopefully this, this is, is just the passing shower. This raincoat's about 40% effective. <laughs> so what do you think? Where should we try to climb? I... So if you look at the top, and there's like... there's little like um gullies gullies yeah with greenery and so there's, there's like, like the, the left rib the left rib goes all the way up yeah yep. and then there's like the next little gully with like a small strip of greenery yep and then the third gully in has like a more widespread greenery yeah i'm thinking from that straight down <laughs> that's exactly where i want is to it exactly. it looks like i mean it looks so steep and clean it does and it looks like there's plenty of crack systems i don't know about like belay ledges 
<laughs> well, that's okay. I don't need blade ledges. I don't. You don't. You don't need blade ledges. <laughs> All right. So there's a line here called Cold Mountain, and this we're interpreting as a dihedral and a roof. A dihedral is a corner system. There's a rock fall here that's pretty obvious, a big scar. And there's some dihedrals where I put these dots to the right of it. And I think that's where we're gonna go try to drop in and check out that between Hanta Yo here and Cold Mountain. But there's some roofs down in the bottom here and we're not quite sure how we're gonna get past those or if there's even a way past those. With their destination glassed with the spotting scope, the next step was to sort through the climbing gear and decide what to bring to the spot. The plan was to hike above the route and rappel down, or as you will hear Steve say, wrap the route. Mm -hmm. Quiet time is at this campsite. It's going to be early. <laughs> and they're going to know about it. <laughs> oh no, honey. I don't... I don't want to know the truth. <laughs> All right. All right. Oh, it's not too bad. I mean, it's not pleasant, <laughs> but it's survival. got some gear packed and we are racing the rain so it's yeah. supposed to start coming in this afternoon and we're gonna go drop gear off up at the ridge and maybe wrap the route and go see what the weather looks like but we got some like 50 pound packs full of ropes and gear to hike up there which 50 pounds is an understatement I, yours is probably more than 50 pounds I think so i think so i always like to make the packs lighter in my head they're like 30 pounds. They're 30 great. pounds, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're definitely not 70 pounds. Not even close. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, we can get back just in time. Just in time. We literally got back, <laughs> made food, got in the tent, and here we, comes the rain. We didn't <laughs> quite get out dry. We no. got rained on, but it could have been a lot worse. Barely, barely rained on. <laughs> so. Now we're hunkered down. Now time for some coffee, coffee, breakfast. tea, <laughs> breakfast sandwiches for lunch, and uh, basically wait out a day and a half of rain. So it goes. Gotta love New England.
Aiden and KP start with the seating area around the sides and aft of the cockpit opening. Once this is glued up, it will come out onto sawhorses upside down so the footwell can be built up. And what's the purpose of building that? It, it'll be the cockpit because we're going to... So this whole thing is going to be like a big tub. Oh, yeah. That will... You want to be super watertight, super mm -hmm. strong because it's... It's where this, all the standing, pounding around and jumping in. And yeah. And you want it to be super hefty, watertight, but also drain really well. So we're going to catch drains and hoses overboard. It gets really dirty because you often end up eating in here and mm -hmm. stuff. It gets gross. So basically, we're going to glue these strips and then nail them fore and aft on either side, and then a thwart ship, if you will. But we're not gonna do it all right now because this side's curved, so we need to get some of the curve into it. But we also need, once it's dry, to cut this curved clump to a straight edge so that this straight edge meets up with this straight edge for our final product. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So I think if we can crank that out, we'll just do like maybe two or three strips on either side, a couple strips aft, and let it dry. Come back. Cut it tomorrow. Sound good? Yep. Okay. So over the last year, Robin and I have done some digging, and this is all the information that we've really been able to dig up on the roots there. There's not a lot of There's it. A lot. Um, so this is Katahdin Renaissance, which is written by Ben Townsend. I've never personally met Ben Townsend, but you've talked to him. Right? I have spoken with him. I wrote an article for Climbing Magazine on a, on a route that Ben Townsend had established, I, I think mid-80s, maybe late 80s, um, called Wind in the Willows. So I wrote an article about that, but in talking to Ben... Um, and just about like the different routes he's established and what his favorite routes are and which ones are like his babies. Um, he talked a lot about North Basin and it sounds like based on reading um, Katata and Renaissance and some other, other write-ups online that we've been able to find, it sounds like North Basin's kind of been this curiosity peaking wall that just draws these climbers in, but no one's really been able to link anything up on the wall. I mean, there's a handful of routes on the left side of the uh, wall that me and Steve had climbed last year. And it's just sort of like, we don't really know what route we climbed. It just is kind of grouped as in like many routes to the top. Um, so we went up one of the many routes to the top of the wall. Um, but the right side of the wall is really wild and steep and there are some really amazing features. Um, lots of like dihedrals and flake systems and these tiny little cracks. And you know, back in the 80s, they didn't really have the gear that we have today. Um, you know, back then the smallest pieces that they would be able to protect those cracks with are, are not really rated to catch a body weight fall. They're not, they're rated to hold your body weight but not catch a fall. And today we have gear that, you know, is just as small that could catch a Buick if you dropped it on it. So hoping that we're with, with new technology, we're able to connect the dots between some of these really cool features on the right side of the wall. So these are some of the things that we were talking about that didn't exist in the 80s or the 70s or the 90s. Yeah. These all came out in a well, bit later. These did, but the light rocks? Well, not the light rocks, but, but knots. knots. I mean, yeah. knots that would serve this purpose. But these guys, ball nuts and the little wires. Okay. Okay, that's not too bad, David up. Gonna be lighter than what we carried up yesterday. 20 pounds of gear. Thankfully, we really don't need to bring much for camping gear. No. That's that's real life. Pads, bags, pillows. Bug net. Camp stove. Yep. Freeze dried Easy. meals, granola bars. It's not really much. Yep.
You ready to go get pummeled by the wind? Yeah. <laughs> well, we were super lucky and the spot opened up at Chimney Pond because of the rain. So we hiked up yesterday with all our gear for the rest of our stay. And now we're headed back up to the ridge to collect our stashed packs and go drop in. The winds are forecasted to be as high, if not higher, than when we bailed the other day. But the big difference is the winds are forecasted to drop as the day progresses and the night comes and there's no rain or storm. So last time we were dealing with increasing winds and a big front on the way. Wind we can handle, rain we can handle. Wind and rain starts to become really problematic. So today it should just be wind and it should be decreasing. So let's go get buffeted and drop in and see what we see. It's a gorgeous day though, shaping up to be lovely. What do you think, Robin? How are you feeling? Oh, I feel so good. This is like, I mean, where else would I want to be right now? And we're going to go find a, a climb. Maybe. How are you feeling? Can the next question? <laughs> Everyone's like, why am I dating this lunatic? It's been a great day. What did we just do? And so we just came down from up there. Kind of like up in that X. Just focus up in there and down. You can see our line right there. And now, we have to make our way past this minefield of Krumholst and Scree. <laughs> I didn't stay dry. <laughs> no, neither did I. Oh, this is what we do for fun. This is what we do for fun. I just have to accept the fact that I'm not going to have dry feet again until Tuesday. So today's supposed to be our best weather yet, right? Yeah. Yep. And it's the first day we don't have to carry big packs somewhere. Yep. Like that. And we don't have a lot of elevation to gain. 
not with our legs. No. What do you think, right entrance or left entrance? I say right. Okay. I think that looks like it's going to come right up at the underneath our line. Today was supposed to be our uh, impeccable weather window and I'm um, sitting here on a belay ledge in the rain waiting for Steve to wrap down. He's coming down from up there. I keep seeing the ropes wiggling around so I know he's on his way but uh, yeah this was a surprise rain. So what we found when we got up on the wall um, was that really, really great climbing and the, uh, the reputation of sparse and tricky protection, even with all of the modern tricks, uh, held true. So there were, there were sections where there was like really great climbing with really great gear. Stellar climbing. And then other spaces where... With a stellar little, climbing. Stellar climbing. <laughs> really bad gear. Maybe with a little cleaning, there would be... Uh, some better gear would reveal yeah. a lot of like hollow flakes, um, which is pretty typical for a, a undeveloped cliff. But there's some blank sections uh, in our, where we were, we ran into about a 50 foot run where there was yeah. featured like probably five, eight face climbing. Yeah. Um, yep. But 50, 60 feet of no gear whatsoever. Yeah. Uh, which beautiful rock though. Yeah. It was so like it beckoned. And uh, we like weren't the first detectable. people to go up there and no. we weren't the first people to bail because <laughs> no. we found remnants uh, going back a long time. There was a bolt up there from, I don't know, 60s, 70s? It was old. It was old. I wasn't um, about to clip into it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, so without, really without some bolts, the roots there are going to stay pretty undeveloped and pretty wild and that seems to be the ethos of Baxter. So here they don't yeah. want any left behind fixed gear, be it pitons or bolts. Uh, so you either got to be really, really, really bold and uh, climb basically into the death hospital zone if you fall. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or they, they stay wild in remote cliffs. But who knows, yeah. maybe in time that ethos will change and some bolts will creep into North Basin. But Just like six bolts. Yeah, for like a six or eight pitch route. Classic. Yeah, but well, it's not it's how they bummer. roll. Yeah, it's, it's a bummer. <laughs> so, it was fun exploring. Oh, super fun exploring. Yeah. It was great to have like an honest to God adventure. Yeah, I it's learned some new skills. Yeah. I usually just bring the brute force, <laughs> the ability to, to climb, establish roots really hard. I've never really done anything like this before, so. We had some suffering, just carried some heavy loads, had some bad weather. Yeah. Yeah, uh, definitely suffered. Looking forward to the next one. Hey, we can still suffer. We can still suffer. <laughs> it's a good test. <laughs> a few days later, Steve was back in the boathouse. After setting Aiden up to clean up, fair, and sand the cockpit, he got right back to work on the deck planks up forward. We'll have a closer look at that progress next week.
epoxy for anything. 